Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. My name is Diane and today we are going to be learning about the anatomy of light and shadow using graphite pencils. So we're going to come away with something that looks like this, just a simple sphere on a flat surface. We're going to use several different types of pencils, layering to get lights, mediums, and dark values, layered in one by one, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for joining me. Let's get to it. So before we get into drawing our sphere, which is what we are going to use to practice the anatomy of light and shadow on a three-dimensional object, we are going to just walk through the materials you're going to need. So you'll need a piece of drawing paper. I just ripped one out of a sketchbook um, meant for graphite pencils and um, a piece of scratch paper, really any paper will do. You'll need some sort of round object so that you can use it to trace your sphere. I'm just using a roll of tape. You want it to be small enough to where it fits on the page comfortably with some room around it, but not so tiny that it's going to be difficult to shade in, like you wouldn't want to do something this small, for example. Uh, you'll need some sort of eraser. I have a separate eraser as well as a couple of erasers on a couple of my pencils. So as long as you have one, that's fine. And you'll need a variety of graphite pencils. You can also do this technically with just one graphite pencil, but it's much um, you get a much broader range of values or lights and darks if you have a range of graphite pencils. So um, I have I happen to have a 6H. You can see the number right there on the shaft of the pencil and all graphite pencils you can find in fine art stores will have these numbers that um, tell you what the lightness or darkness is. So we'll go through that in a minute, but just to tell you, I have 6H, 2H, I have a standard number two pencil, but if you look above the two, it says HB, and that is kind of your middle ground pencil, which is why it's the most common one that we just all have in our pencil holders. I have a 2B, and I have a 5B. You don't have to have these exact pencils. Let me just emphasize that. Um, in fact, I would say the minimum you want is one H pencil, an HB or middle range pencil, and then one B pencil. So we'll just go through that, um, what everything means. The H stands for hard, um, and it the H pencils are always lighter. So I'll show you what they look like. This is the six H pencil. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. <clears throat> and you can see it's quite light. And then the 2H pencil is a little bit darker. The HB pencil is even darker still. And like I was saying before, that's sort of the middle one. So these two are light pencils. That's your standard middle pencil. And then we get into the dark pencils, the B pencils, and B stands for black. 2B you can see is darker, and then 5B is the darkest one. So you can see, you know, the 6H and 2H are very similar. The, eight, the 2H and HB are even kind of similar. The black pencils are very similar. So you don't have to have all of these. You, you can have more if you want, but I would say have one H pencil. It doesn't really matter which one. They're all so similar. Have the middle pencil and then pick a B pencil um, for this class. So I'm going to use my lightest pencil, my middle pencil, and my darkest pencil and just take out the, the 2H and the 2B. I just kind of wanted to show you a larger range of pencils in case you feel like really layering that much. Got a crumb on my paper. Um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to emphasize is you can see I have different brands of pencils because I don't subscribe to one or the other. I think they're all fine brands so you can just um, use whatever brand you would like. Um, right now what we're going to do is just a quick uh, kind of tone scale or um, range so you can just practice layering. So I'm going to do it with all three pencils and then I'm going to do it with just the middle pencil so you can see the difference. So you can practice this right along with me. Take your lightest pencil and just color kind of across a, a real scribbly, scrabbly, thick sort of band of, of line. And then take your middle pencil, your HB, and start a little ways in and just lightly color right over it. Kind of the same thing. I'm going to do another band with just the HB because I want you to see the difference in value range between using just one pencil for this practice and using more than one. So there's my light band with the HB. Here's my medium band. 
I'm just doing another layer, pretty much the same pressure. I'm pressing a little bit harder. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to do the 5B on the tail end of this band and more HB on the tail end of this one. Still just kind of using medium pressure. So you can see there is a range here, but it's not as great a range as if you use the three um, pencils. So I encourage you to use three different ones if you have them. Enough of that talk. Let's move on to the actual practice exercise of we're going to draw a sphere and uh, tone it in with values of graphite, the different values. And we're going to talk about the anatomy of light and shadow on a three-dimensional object. So first thing you can do, actually, let's use our light pencil, is just draw your sphere. So take your round object and trace your circle. I'm choosing the inside because the smaller, oh, wow, you can't even see that. Maybe I'll use the um, slightly darker pencil. Um, I chose the inside because it takes less time um, and I don't want to use up all your time um, doing this. I just want to show you how. So we're going to start with um, identifying where the highlight is going to be on the object. It's going to be around just a ball, a sphere. And let's pretend the highlight is the light source is coming from the right and it's going to hit our object right about here. So first thing you're going to do is just very lightly with your HB pencil, draw a big circle on your object. You move this all up a little bit so you can see better. And I don't even know if you can see that. It's so light. Let me hold it up a little bit more. Barely see it, but you want to barely see it. You don't want this to be obvious because eventually it's going to disappear completely. Right now it's just a placeholder. So once you have your big circle on the right upper side of your sphere, use your um, lightest pencil and start putting in value. You can just scribble, scrabble, but do go generally in the direction of the sphere. I advocate this in my other anatomy of light and shadow classes in other mediums such as oil pastel, charcoal. And I advocate that because it, um, it keeps your object, whatever it is, kind of true to form if you're coloring in the direction of the form itself. So for example, if I was doing a sky, I would be coloring sideways because the clouds and sky and such appear to go horizontally to the eye. But I am doing a sphere, so I'm coloring kind of in a round, in a circle. And again, just getting a light coat of lines over the whole thing. So in case that's difficult to see, I'm gonna hold it up so you can just sort of see what that looks like. And I put it, I forgot to mention, I put it off to the side a little bit because we're going to also color a shadow here. So I'm going to start a little lower than halfway up the object and make just sort of a round shadow going off to the left because the light ca being cast this way is going to naturally cast a shadow onto the surface that the sphere is sitting on. <clears throat> this is called the cast shadow because of that exact function. And I'm going to do a light coat of lines over this too, but this time I'm coloring horizontally because that's the direction the shadow is going. Just real, real light, just a placeholder. You could think of this as your roadmap. Now we have our object and the main shadow that it's casting onto the surface. So now I will switch to my HB pencil and do the same thing, but I'm not going to get so close to the highlight. I'm going to start a little ways out and just sort of do another layer of lines in a generally circular sense, but you can see I'm being scribble scrabbly about it. Because this is graphite, um, I'm kind of using the nature of the tool and making the lines very visible, and it creates a sense of texture and uh, handmadeness to the object. But you could choose, if you want, to color very, very finely something like that, so that you really don't see the lines when you're done. One thing I definitely want to discourage you from doing, if you've ever done this before, is use your finger to smudge the pencil. Even though technically that does work and it smooths it out, that takes away the nature of the pencil. And it also, um, in my opinion, kind of looks like a crutch for when you're kind of trying to hide that you don't know exactly how to layer with the pencil. So if you're able to avoid doing that. It, it um, lends itself to a more sophisticated 
look and um, kind of a more knowledgeable base that you're coming from putting the pencil on the paper. I hope I explained that well. Um, but yeah, I guess my, my point is if you ever submit a portfolio or anything like that, if you use your finger to smudge, it will likely count against you in terms of technical knowledge. That's not to say that we don't use our finger to smudge in other mediums like blendable mediums such as charcoal or pastel, that that's kind of where you use your finger to smudge. But even then you can use the tool itself to blend rather than your finger in a lot of cases. But since we're not doing charcoal and pastel, I won't dwell on that. Let's get on to the darkest pencil. So what we've just done now is another layer of line. Sorry, I was talking so much about that. I forgot to mention when I colored the HB pencil in the cast shadow, you may have noticed I didn't go all the way to the edge. If you did, that's fine. You can just extend it a little bit further with the light pencil, but we want it to start darker where it's near the sphere and uh, sort of fade out. So it blends out and get its blurriest and lightest at the furthest point away from your object and it's darkest and sharpest at the closest part. <clears throat> so now we're gonna use the dark pencil and we're gonna put in the darkest shadow, which is called the core shadow on your object. The core shadow will be pretty far away from the highlight, almost opposite, but it's not gonna go all the way to the edge because your light source is coming in this way, hitting the object and kind of going past the object to hit the mat, but the part that is not getting light is in the cast shadow and the light from out here is bouncing back from the table or whatever surface and it's landing on the outside edge of your sphere so there's going to be a little sliver of reflection and that's called reflected light right there so when we put in the core shadow we're just going to do um, a sort of crescent moon shape but not going all the way to the edge leave that little sphere there and the crescent is going to touch the edge of the sphere just about opposite each other. So if it starts here, it's gonna end here. And um, then it creates the illusion of kind of going off of the sphere. And then we're gonna do the other side of the crescent, just kind of make a, a thick band of dark in the center. And that's also gonna go off the edge right here. Then I'm going to color this in pretty dark. Again, kind of going in a generally circular motion. Not too concerned about it, but mostly following the curve of the object. And then we're going to build that, uh, kind of blend it into the surrounding area. Um, I don't think I defined this part um, of the object for you. This is called local color if the object was in color. Because it's a black and white picture, I'm not sure if it's actually called local color or it might be like local value per perhaps because value is the word we use to describe black and white or light and dark, but it's local. It's, the, it's basically the main color on your object. Um, so now I'm going to go back and just color very lightly along the outside edge of the core shadow to create a sense of blending into the local color or local value. So I'm just lightening up on pressure. Pressure is a big thing in graphite. Just how hard you press will determine how light or dark something is, as well as which pencil you're using, of course. So I'm going to creep up on the bottom here and try to get it to blend a little bit more seamlessly because I'm still seeing a sense of an edge between the dark and the, uh, the core shadow and the local color. So I really want to get that to just disappear by going over and over it until the edge, the sense of the edge is gone. And then I'm going to bring the dark color all the way to the outside edge and that will um, help with the three dimensionality kind of look like the sphere is rounding off in the back there and I'm going to very carefully and lightly blend it into the local color here as well. Barely, barely touching the paper right now. And then I'm going to do the same blending on the opposite side into the reflected light, but I'm going to do it much less gradually because I have much less space. So I have to do it um, pretty quickly. Oop. 
Oops, went outside. That's why we have erasers, no big deal. And up here, I still feel like I need to blend a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to go back to the cast shadow and put in what's called the occlusion shadow, which is a very, very dark line. It's only right where the sphere is touching the mat. So just a little dash right where it actually makes contact. A common mistake I see is people will often make the occlusion shadow kind of smile and creep up the sides of the sphere, but then you end up with a smile or an outline look. And what we want is just a hint of real extreme dark right where it's touching. So from there, on the left, we're going to color out into the cast shadow, not smiling up, but just creating kind of a triangle of color here, of value that is going to lighten and lighten and lighten further and further. So all I'm doing is lightening the pressure. I'm still coloring with the same pencil, but I'm just lightening the pressure so that it appears to blend sort of naturally into the cast shadow on the left. And then I can go back and just um, adjust or change anything. Like I, I'll take my eraser and erase mistakes right there. I'm going to use my eraser to just kind of even up the bottom edge there. Brush off the dust. And I took off a little bit too much, so I'm going to get my very light pencil. Whoops, that's not the right one. Get my very light pencil back and put that back down so that it rounds out on the bottom. I also have a sense of an outline here. I don't want that, so I'm going to color over it. I need to press a little bit harder to make sure the cast shadow is the same value as the outline, and then I can pull it out even a little bit further on the left to get it to blend out and disappear more gradually. Lastly, I still have a, a hint of my original circle, so I'm going to take the lightest pencil and just go in to the edge, inside edge around the highlight, and color very, very lightly with my lightest pencil in sort of random scribbly, scrabbly circular strokes to try to camouflage that line and make it disappear into the surrounding value. And then I have a little bit of a flatness here, which I don't want to use the dark pencil for. I just want to kind of camouflage that. So I'm just using the light pencil and pressing a little bit. And then right here where my occlusion shadow ends, I want that to end a little bit more gradually. So I'm going to take my medium pencil, since I don't want it to be extremely dark, and just kind of let it end at a fine point that just disappears into the sphere right there. Now I'll erase my smudge because I can. Why not? So you can go ahead and touch up however you would like. Um, add more darks, pull out more lights. You can erase if you need to. And I hope you've had a good time learning about the anatomy of light and shadow with graphite. Thank you so much for joining me for this class and have a beautiful rest of your day. Mm -hmm.